Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Rap Reggie. How's it going, everyone? And I see you have a new game room, man. Yeah, what do you think? I'm glad you didn't ask me to help you move, but uh, <laughs> I'm glad to be here, man. And we got some new pickups for you guys. Uh, I know it's been a while. Uh, we're very excited to show you what we got, as usual. I've got one of my holy grail items in this video. I know I say that all the time, <laughs> but this is uh, this is gonna be pretty cool. We gotta do the fist bump, dude. Ready? Uh. Oh yeah, <laughs> my nose. <laughs> Let's take a look. All right, dude, I think since you are the guest, you should go first. All right, all right, cool. Um, first game I'm gonna show you guys here is, is a DS game. Uh, my buddy Evan told me about this game. This is a B-Team uh, Metal Cartoon Squad. Now, what type of game is this? This is a run and gun isometric top-down shooter. It reminds me a lot of Metal Slug with animations and everything. Top-down or side view? It's like a top-down and a, like an isometric view. Oh. Not, not a side view like, like like Metal Slug, but it just reminds me of Metal Slug because of the oh, animations okay. and stuff like that. So huh. basically, it's on a DS. So the top screen is is your leader and your and your squad members, and it shows their expressions on their face when they're shooting things and blowing stuff up. And it's really like arcadey, like it's hilarious. And, and of course, the bottom screen is the gameplay. This game is is seriously a lot of fun. I can't believe it didn't come out in America. I'm shocked wow. why it didn't come out to America. But if you're a fan of like stuff like Metal Slug, uh, you could definitely get into this game. I'm just like, I can't believe I found out about this game. I'm glad. Hey, Evan, if you're watching, man, thanks for letting me know, man. I really appreciate you, man, because this game is on point. I have never heard of this. That is very cool. Wow, <laughs> awesome. I love it when we find games for systems like that that you know you think you know what everything is out yeah, there. Yeah, I thought I was done with it, and then you know I found out about that, and I was like, whoa, dude, like okay, I have to get this, so pick huh. it up. Okay. All right. And one more thing. The okay. DS is region free, so you don't have to worry about, you know, being locked out or anything like that. It's region free for a DS game, not 3DS. Well, oh, oh. System. is it just a DS? Interesting. Yeah. I didn't, okay, cool. All right. Next up for me is a game I think you've originally told me about, and that, of course, is Xeno Crisis. Dude, man. I, mm, yeah, man, so... This game. So, uh... This is the Genesis as well as the Mega Drive version. Nice. Which I love how they use different cartridges yep, for each. they did. So Very that's nice. pretty cool. So, um, and of course, the vinyl soundtrack, which is really awesome as well. I didn't even know they did a vinyl soundtrack. I got just regular CD. That's freaking tight, man. They went all out for this they game. They went all out So, on this. Uh, if you guys like a, a twin stick shooter type games, uh, I think it was like Smash TV yes. and things like that. Yeah. This game is like, it's way better than those games. I mean, they did... They did a lot of detail with this game. The music, the characters, the, the way everything is. You really feel like you're, you're, you're like in a time capsule. Like back it in the is day, a like. top-notch game. It mm -hmm. is so much fun. So well made. The controls, the, like you're saying, the graphics are mm -hmm. incredible. Uh, the gameplay is... It's funny it, it, is that uh, it's got what easy and hard mode, and it defaults to hard. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> and, uh, you know, more power to you, but I, I, I knocked that down to easy, and you still get your butt kicked. You do, and I beat the game. You did. I did beat the game, and the de developers, they thought they threw in a surprise for you, uh, for people who beat the game. I beat the game, and, you know, I, you know, I died and everything like that, but when you get to the last boss, if you don't meet a certain, like, criteria, I mean... Really? Something will happen. I'll just oh, like interesting. That. I was pissed off, man. I was like, dude... <laughs> Get out of here. I was mad at the game for a little bit, but I popped it back in probably like three hours later and tried to get to the best ending and everything. So I, I just like how they threw that in there. Oh, uh, yeah, which yeah. Is really great. Well, that's, again, you can tell this is one of the best, uh, you know, modern games for the Genesis mm -hmm. I played. It's so well done, so. Yeah, and the, and the game uh, is available for the Genesis now. Um, it's available on the PSN. Um, oh, okay, cool. Uh, um, I think uh, Xbox Live as well. And they're making copies for the Switch and PS4, like physical copies. Hmm. Neo Geo CD, Dreamcast. I mean, even really? a, 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 and the Neo Geo ABS. A, a, ABS is ABS <laughs> or MVS, whatever. AES, excuse me. I don't know why. I always get those stuff. mixed up. But yeah, they, they're, they're pointing it to all that. So I'm like, dude, they're going on out, all out for this game. So huh. definitely this one will be out there for everybody to check out. So yeah, highly recommend favor, it. Favor and do so. Okay, so next game here I have. I just picked this mm. up yesterday. And... um. This is Life is Strange Part 2. Now, uh, I waited for this game to come out. I didn't go like, episodic like they do online. Yep, I just wait until yep. it's all done. And I went to purchase this game yesterday, and I was disappointed because after, right after I purchased it, I, I didn't read what it says on here. So you basically, you get the game has five episodes. Four episodes are on the disc, and then the, the last episode you get to download. So I got tripped, guys. I was like, man. What? I, I waited for they did that. I, I know. I thought... 
when they complete a game, they put it on the physical format. I thought they wait until they get all the episodes done. I guess they already had this like printed out or whatever, and they said, you know, oh, let's make it a download code for the fifth oh. episode. So I was disappointed in that because I wanted it to be complete. But going to the gameplay, uh, this game starts out pretty strong with the situation that happens. You know, these kids lose someone precious to them, and it, it, it plays just like the other games. Like if you play like games like. Of course, like uh, The Walking Dead, Telltale's Walking Dead, or Wolf Among Us, yeah, stuff like I, that. Yeah, I like the original game a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Is you this know, before or after that? It's after that. Okay. It's a, it's hmm. a, yeah, it's after that. The first game, I remember, you had the powers, which made it interesting. Like, yeah. you rewind time. I love that. Well, and you determine the fate of the town. Mm -hmm. So, th there's multiple you endings do. in the original. And so. it asks you, if you didn't play the first one, it'll ask you what you chose in, in the, okay. the town in this one. So, you that. don't have to play the first one if you don't want to. I recommend you do, because hmm. this sure. makes this one better. But uh, I was just disappointed with the, the download. Yeah, yeah. You know? so, so that means they're probably going to have a Life is Strange 2 Complete Edition. <laughs> I thought this was going to be complete, but I think what will happen is if they decide to port the series as seasons to another system, they'll probably like, oh, do it like yeah, that. Yeah, I, that I would think. Sense. But hmm. you, some people might not care. I don't. I do. I, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'd be, I'm mad well, because about that. You're, you're wanting to get the definitive version that, that you can play years from now. Yeah, I don't want to have to worry about downloading something yeah. from the internet. That's yeah. basically so. Yeah. That's all. But Life is Strange Part 2, so far, I didn't get to play that much of it, but I do like what I've seen so far. It started out pretty sad, so hopefully things will pick up. I'm still on the first episode. and um, Roxy can tell that you're very sad. Yeah, she already <laughs> knows. She can sense it. But Life is Strange Part 2. Okay, very cool. Uh, next up for me... Uh, Earthworm Jim, the 25th anniversary edition. This is Earthworm Jim 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, I believe, who made, yeah, I Am 8-Bit made this. So Dang. this is a great 25th anniversary edition of these two games. It comes in this, like you can see here, it's got this foil mm -hmm. look to, uh, on the cover here. It's also embossed. Uh, it opens up into this like little, um, you know, like poster thing. And then what they did, there's 2,000 copies. So this is a brand new cartridge that they made. Mm -hmm. Both games are in here, 2,000. Now, 1,900 of them are utter pink, is what this is called. Uh -huh. And then 100 of them randomly would actually be spotted like a cow. Really? Yeah, so there's 100 people out there that bought these that that like won the lottery and got the- You never know what you were gonna get. You, you never know what you're gonna get. So. Okay. But it's a really cool, I just kind of want to show because it's it's a really cool version of uh, these games. Plus it comes with full manuals, so it's it's dual-sided nice. like that. Um, also a little bit of behind the scenes. Just a really well done version of I, this game. I'm a little bit surprised that they uh, chose the Super Nintendo version over the Genesis one. I think the Genesis one is, is supposed to be superior. I think that's, I know. And so I think that that's what some people online have said, but. You guys let us know which one you think is superior. Yeah. Super Nintendo or Genesis, but that's yeah, really cool, man. Hopefully they bring Earthworm Jim back, you know. Or is he back already? Maybe I just don't know I it. think he's coming back on the Amico. Oh, I remember them talking I, about yes. that. Okay, that's what that I was about. I think that's so what's happening that with that. That's, that's gonna be the big launch title for the Amico. I've heard. I don't know. I think that's that's uh, the rumor. So, okay, we'll see. Yeah. All right. What is, what to go to next? Okay. So uh, there's a company out there. You know that, how they have those uh, like those limited run companies out there and everything mm -hmm. that do small print games. Or there's a company called Red Art Games, and it doesn't seem like anybody really knows about them because like most of the, the sites that are like that sell limited quantities and stuff, they're sold out. I, I don't think I've ever heard of them. Yeah, like Red Art Games. I think I believe they're in France, and they I got this game from them. It's called Halloween Forever. Huh. They only made 999 copies of this game, uh, still available as I've seen, and it's pretty much like a platform game, like an old school like 8-bit platform game. Pretty fun game. Um, it kind of pissed me off because what happened was I got to the end of the level and I fought the boss, and then like I beat the boss, but he beat me at the same time. So oh. yeah, and basically when you get killed, you have to start <laughs> the beginning of the level. I got the trophy and everything in the footage, but then it's like, what the heck? I got to start the whole level again, even though I beat him. I was like, Ugh. But oh, that's his eight bit frustration, though. Still good, <laughs> still a cool game. Um, but yeah, I just want to let everybody know this is out there as a physical, and you know, it, it looks really good. Um, I'm just surprised nobody really has talked about this game, and, and it came with a manual. I didn't even realize that. So. Huh. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's cool. So, Halloween Forever, uh, let us know what you guys think about this game. Is it worth picking up as a physical or just staying digital? Okay. All right, next up for me is video game related, and that is a documentary that uh, I got to watch. It's called Not For Resale, a video game store documentary on Blu-ray. Okay. Have you heard of this? I think I have. I think uh, they emailed me about this coming out. I think it's the same Yeah, so, so this was sent to me... Uh, Pat Contry is the executive producer of this. He, mm -hmm. of course, is the, the NES punk. Um, and basically, this is a really well-made documentary about not just video game stores and what it's like to own and run a 
retro game store, but also like video game culture as well. So it talks about, you know, uh, why physical video games are important to collect. Mm -hmm. um, it also talks about expos and things like that. It's really well shot. I mean, this looks like a quality film-like documentary. I was how very long, impressed. How long has it been in the making? Uh, well, a while because it, it it's just coming out, but it has footage from two years ago from like uh, PRG. Yeah, PRG. Nice. Um, also, by the way, Kelsey is in here and she's talking about, of course, uh, Pink Gorilla and stuff like that. Okay. Um, it, it was really interesting too because they also interviewed the the guy who is uh, he made uh, a Rocket League, and mm -hmm. specifically, you know, Rocket League is this big game, you know, big game, big fran or it's not a franchise, but big game. But anyways, they talk to him and how important it was for him to get Rocket League in a physical form. Really? Yeah, like it was really important for him to, you know, see his his baby on store shelves, <laughs> which is nice. really cool. So you yeah. know, a game that's probably sold billions of copies or billions of dollars worth. So uh, yeah, I really dug it. It's uh, it's there's a Blu-ray release here, but I also saw it on Amazon. Okay. So people are gonna be able to watch it. Definitely check it out. Cool, cool, awesome. I want to check that out. Yeah. All right. So next game here. Um, this one's gonna be a little bit of a dud. So, a dud. But, yeah. I, I I got this just for the name only, and this is um, Beverly Hills Cop for the PS2. Now, the reason I picked this up because I wanted to get a bunch of like TV-based movie games. Okay. And, everything. and I found out about this game, and I thought Eddie Murphy. Yes, this is awesome. And the guy is the, is the same character, Axel Foley, but it does not look like Eddie Murphy at all. It's like, what the heck? So, they, so they didn't get permission to use his likeness. They didn't use his likeness. And they, they didn't even get permission to use the theme song. They actually remixed the theme song, which actually sounds pretty good, like the Beverly Hills okay. theme song. Yeah. That's the only thing good about this game that I can see so far. Um, the first level is really hard, and it's weird to like get past a lot of stuff. I wanted to show better footage, but sorry. This, <laughs> this one was a dud. I'll be adding it to a video later on, but... Yeah, Valley Hills Cop for PS2. It's out there. Oh, you know, I'm just thinking that, you know, it would be funny for you to do like a live stream where you just play a bunch of really bad games. licensed games Dude. like this. You know, because that way, you know, that way people don't have to buy them, but, you know, <laughs> they, they'll watch you play a really bad game. Now, this is Pals. Did, mm -hmm. did it come out here? No. Did oh, okay. Just like Miami Vice and Munchie. Yeah, Dude, yeah. Just like part of that series in a way. So, Beverly Hills Cop... The, yeah, just I can't say anything good about it besides the soundtrack. That's it. I love the movies, even the third oh, one. Oh sure. And we're yeah. gonna get a, we're getting the fourth one on Netflix pretty soon, so be on the lookout for that. You know, huh. so that'll be those well, top the, four. The first two especially are just so good. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, we just uh, watched a couple months ago. I think Beverly Hill, Hills Cop two. Yeah. Yeah, and I love it. Just I love it because. It's just such a great time capsule, like the mm -hmm. way it's shot, the cars, the way yep. people's hair looks, the music, <laughs> everything. It's and of course Eddie Murphy at his absolute prime. Yep. He was so funny, so hilarious. So that's cool, or not? Or not? <laughs> not the game, the well, movie's cool. The game is not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Even. I mean, I was going to go about the third movie. I like the third movie a lot, but I, I remember enjoying it. Yeah, yeah I don't remember much about it, but Eddie yeah. was a little bit more calm in that movie, so it wasn't like he yeah. was his usual self. But you changed with the times, I guess. So. Yeah, interesting, huh? All right, next up for me is a new game, and that is Call of Duty: Modern Warfare. This is the reboot that they did in 2019. So, brand new story, not related to the other ones. It's well, I you know, I wish I could recall all the stories. Okay, <laughs> there's a lot of them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You know, honestly, I played the original so long ago, I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure this is a complete reboot because it felt very new. Okay. Um, it deals basically with a, uh, a terrorist bomb that goes off in the middle of London, and there's this whole thing where you go to the Middle East to try to track down who's got these chemical weapons that are mm -hmm. going to be potentially starting a war within the region. Uh, amazing graphics. So they went game. all out in the story mode like they yes. usually would. Okay. Yeah, they really did. And it's going all over the place like these games do. So just to be clear, I buy and play these games for the single player. Yep. You know, That's what I did too. Yeah, they're fun. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're five, six hour single player games that you did can you, finish. Did you, you know? attempt to go online just to see how it was? Oh, hell no, no I didn't. Although actually it's funny you mentioned that because uh, my nephew was over here a couple weeks ago and he was online mm -hmm. and he is way better than me and he still gets utterly destroyed. <laughs> so I was really fun actually watching somebody who is actually halfway decent, but uh, no, that's not for me. Yeah, I tried online for it years ago, man. It's, it's brutal. I'm like, dude, yeah. get, get me out of here. Well, it, <laughs> to me it feels like it, it's the ultimate hellish 
difficulty setting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you're already at, you've, you've beat hard, very hard, nightmare, it's the next level because mm -hmm. people are just so good, so talented. So actually, I, I don't mind watching it, but but the single player story in this was fantastic. The graphics, I was playing on the Xbox One X, um, the motion capture, the characters, all of that was really cool. So okay. I enjoyed it. I finished it. It was good. Good stuff. How long did it take you? Like you game hours, you think? I, I, you know, to be honest, I don't remember because I did run into some glitches where I actually had to restart the level a couple okay. times. Uh, that's one thing I would say is that I actually ran into several glitches where I had to restart levels. Um, I don't know what the deal was. I ran the patch, but so it wasn't too long. Okay. Yeah. You said it wasn't too long. No, it wasn't. It didn't overstay its welcome. Um, next game here is another uh, game from Red Art Games. Uh, this is uh, Riddle Corpses uh, hmm. EX. Uh, this is a twin stick shooter game. Is it and, on Vita? Yeah, it's on Vita as well. And, oh. Uh, yeah, I was I was shocked because like like I said, like these games are like totally in stock, not sold out. They've been up for a while. Hmm. And I played this game, and it's actually pretty fun. It's a it's a two player co op game where you shoot zombies, like kind of like scroll down like the level and everything. Mm -hmm. You get upgrades. You can stop time because the zombies will swarm you. So you need anything you uh, at, at your disposal. Okay. Blow up cars and blow up a bunch of them and all that hmm. so they catch on fire. Um, this, I think this is a really cool game. Happy it got a physical, but like I said, not a lot of people know it got a physical because, um, this game has been on that website for, for a while and hasn't sold out and they, they only make limited quantities. Hmm. I think there's only 1500 of, of these made. Gosh, so it's not amazing. Um, I love seeing new Vita games. Yeah, it's but incredible. I saw Joe from Media Glitch play this a while back and that's when I took interest in this game. So, uh, let, let us know what you guys think about yeah. this game. If some of you have played this, um, and yeah. Hmm. All right, next up for me, another game that is newer. I know, weird, right? Yeah, yeah, what do you got here? On the Xbox One. Dude, Control. Yes. Okay. So, Control is a game I heard an awful lot about. Honestly, I bought this because it was making so many end-of-year best-of lists. Mm -hmm. You know, and people are talking like the, the best games of, of 2019. This game is coming up an awful lot. So much so, actually, that... Around Christmas time, I tried to buy a copy, and they were sold out everywhere. Really? Yeah. So it was actually, for a while, it was a little bit hard to find a copy of this. I think because those lists came out, and because of Christmas, they were people just buying it. So Yeah, Remedy, um, the makers of Max Payne, mm -hmm. they also made Alan Wake, I believe. Yep. And so this is a uh, really interesting uh, third-person action shooter game you where you have powers uh it, it's it's it has a visual style that is just so unique because you're kind of in this like 1960s or 50s style fe uh government building the whole mm -hmm. time but it's warped and weird it's almost like this alternate dimension i'm not super far into it yet so people are probably like oh you don't know what's going on you're absolutely right because <laughs> <laughs> like it's weird dude because there's people who are suspended in time that are above you, almost like just hanging in the air. and Suspended animation? They're not moving? Yeah, right? they're just stuck there, but yet the, the rest of the world is around them and you can interact with it. It's just really bizarre when it comes to dimensions and stuff. So okay. I don't know what's happening yet. I'm still only a couple hours into it, but so far it's really trippy. Did that game win like Game of the Year or something like I that? I believe so. I, if it didn't win Game of the Year, it was definitely on a lot of people's lists. I think, yeah, I remember there's some controversy about that because they were choosing games that like just came out. Like I think Death Stranding got a, or was going to get an award and it just came out and everyone was like, what the heck? This hmm. just got out. But I don't know. It's hard That's to say. You know, it's so subjective when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, so it is. I typically try to find... What are a lot of people saying, and then basically, you know, base my judgments on that. And this one definitely kept coming up, and I wanted to play it before, you know, people spoiled the ending. So um, I, I'm enjoying it so far. Very cool. <laughs> Our next game here is a game we talked about, and it finally got a physical release. Um, this oh, is Remothered uh, hmm. for the Switch and PS4. I've been following this game for a good while. Uh, this game has pretty much kind of been in development since uh, 2010. When it was more like a uh, a side scrolling game, hmm. and I watched it evolve into what it is now. So um, it's basically if you play games like Clock Tower Three um, and our Hunting Ground, you'll know what to kind of expect with the survival horror with this game. Basically, you're kind of defenseless, and there's stalkers out there trying to get you. A girl, Rosemary, she goes to a a, a house to investigate a missing girl, and um, she gets she sneaks back into the mansion when she's not supposed to, and ends up being locked in there, and. Finds out that the the man in there is crazy, and he's he's 
going to try to kill her and he's stalking you so you can't really walk around run around the area because he'll hear you he's good hearing yeah and he'll come out and you have to run from him and you have to use defensive items to try to get away from him it's brutal uh, but it's a lot of fun you really play the game carefully because you don't want to alert him you like, kind of like tiptoe around yeah i remember make sure that. around and all that good stuff a lot of fun and um also it's going to get a sequel this year um uh, remothered, I think, Broken Porcelain or something like that. Hmm. And that's going to go like the physical release, not just d- digital at first, which is great. This game went digital first, then went the physical. Yeah, I remember you so, talking about that. Huh. So definitely a uh, top-notch survival horror game. Uh, only goes for $30 for the Switch, PS4, and uh, Xbox One, too. Okay, so, so reasonably priced. Yeah. Uh, well, you mentioned survival horror. Uh-oh. So I have a game called Close to the Sun. This is a survival horror game. This was sent to me by the developer. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of this yet? I have not. So this, I believe that's like a little 45. Yeah, that's a 45 um, from the soundtrack. So what yeah. this is, is, and I'll, I'll hand you the artwork here too. Okay. This is a pretty cool collector's edition. So thank you very much for sending me this. It's a survival horror game that is very much like, uh, kind of like Bioshock, you know, mm-hmm. like that sort of 1800s, early 1900s, right. sort of Victorian style. Um, you basically are trying to discover what happened to your sister, and you go around and very much like a survival horror, you're trying to solve puzzles, get through mm-hmm. doorways, trying not to uh, you know get attacked or killed in the game. Is it shown in third person or first person? Game? First person. Okay. Yeah. So it, again, it's very much it. It re- immediately reminded me of Bioshock. Wow. Um, it it, yeah. it just it just doesn't have all the weapons and stuff like that like Bioshock. It's very much a survival horror game. So there's no big daddies walking around like trying to stalk you. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil this okay. for anybody, but it, it, it's. <laughs> It's cool. So, uh, it's a game that kind of seemed to fly under the radar a little bit. So, I kind of wanted to highlight it here. Okay. I have not finished it yet, um, but you guys are seeing the footage here. And it's got, it, it's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. So, That's so you I didn't like, know about. So, yeah, I know. I like, didn't I, know about that. I thought for sure you'd know about this one. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a regular version of this as well. So, um, you don't have to get this fancy collector's edition. But. Okay. All right. Next game here. Um, Got this recently through a trade. Uh, this is Katsui uh, for the uh, uh, PS4. Hmm. Um, uh, shoot 'em up games. Uh, really? Usually, people like feel they're pretty universal. I think, but this is definitely one that stands out. Um, this was made by Cave, and yeah, I know. Is Cave, it? Yeah, I know Cave's like kind of like, they don't really do shoot up shoot ups anymore. But a company called M2 is bringing a lot of their games to the physical format, uh, mostly on PS4 and uh, and really? Switch as well. So. Um, a top-notch shoot 'em up, uh, definitely something that I think a lot of people who like shoot 'em ups would p- want to pick up. Wow! Uh, it's every version of the game, I believe, put on a disc. So like, if there's a certain arcade version that people like, that's on here. Uh, the home console version is, is on there, and a couple extras and everything like that. So, um, Katsui, another awesome shoot 'em up from Cave. Damn! All right, that's pretty cool. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. I got lucky and picked it up. I picked it up from my, my buddy. This is, oh, here's a funny story, actually. So um, my, my buddy Ryan at, at, a, at a Toy Box Games, um, he said someone came in his store and traded in all these shoot 'em ups. He's like, "Man, where'd you, where'd you, where'd you, where'd you get all these from?" He said, "Yeah, I, I watch Reggie and Metal Jesus channel and everything, and um, I saw all these shoot 'em ups and I picked them up over time. But then he realized he wasn't playing all of them, so he wanted to trade them in." Wait. Did he post a photo of this on social media? Yeah. Okay, because I yeah. saw that photo saw that? and I, I almost messaged you like Reggie, will you go get? Because I was I circle like the ones that I wanted. Yeah, I would. Yeah, dude. He, he had still, a bunch. Did he have a bunch of Xbox 360 ones as well? He, he had a couple of them, and you, I think you might see them pretty soon. Actually, <laughs> okay, I might have picked some of them. That up. is so funny. Okay, it's all coming full yeah. circle here. I remember that post. See, yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, you know. Huh. Yeah, he, he still has a lot of them there. So I was like, dude, I went there and made sure I got the ones that I was missing. So. Uh, yeah, right. that would be another video possibly though. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next up for me, another video, uh, another video, another game that's somewhat new <laughs> in this video. Right. Need for Speed Heat on the Xbox One X. Have they got back to the roots of what made a series great yet? I don't know. You know, so here's the thing. I recently did that video of We Hidden Gems and I, and I mm-hmm. played Need for Speed Nitro. And I was immediately like, oh my god, this is the game that I want to play. Right. And at the same time, I picked this one up and I was like, Ugh. So I think this is a decent Need for Speed game. It reminds me of the kind of uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. Mm-hmm. It's very much in the style they've been doing lately where it's open world. Mm-hmm. This time it's kind of in a, I forget what the city's called. It's like Palm City. It's basically like a Orlando or, okay. or Miami. Um, so the, the location's beautiful. The city's gorgeous. Um, one thing I do like about this is that it, the weather effects change 
like sometimes in the middle of a race. Oh, really? Yeah, like so this one time I was racing and it was kind of overcast and then literally it just starts pouring and the water's all over the ground and it's, it's gray okay. in the middle of a race, which was pretty cool. Um, and it also has a day and night cycle, which de determines um, the types of races you get and also the amount of money and stuff like okay. that. So it's, I don't know. I, so here's the thing, I mean, know, about a Need for Speed game. It, they usually pull you in and I'll give you an example, like Need for Speed Most Wanted or Need for Speed Carbon. Need for, Need for Speed Most Wanted started you off, you're watching a cinematic of cars racing against each other, then the next thing you know you're in control of one of them. That's very exciting when a game does that to yeah. you. Yeah. And it like pulls you in, like you're in this, all, all of a sudden you're in this race and you're controlling this car, like, whoa, this is awesome. And same thing for Carbon, uh, where you're on the hills racing down from that crazy yeah. cop cross. But um, after that, they never really pulled me in. Um, yeah. Not... The, the problem I have with these games is that, you know, they've, they've just leaned towards the simulator, and so like, you know, the cars to me always feel so sluggish. Honestly, I... I end up kind of fighting with the controls more, where it just seems like I'm oversteering a lot. Mm -hmm. Where I wish they would just be a little bit tighter and a little bit, and it could be just like my my car's crap because it's the beginning of the game. Right. That very well could be it. But I get more frustrated where the reason why I mentioned Need for Speed Nitro because that's an arcade game where you're immediately in there having fun. Yes. You're sliding around corners. You, you know, you're not fighting with it so much. So this game looks gorgeous. Um, it's a you know a decent racing game. It reminds me of also Forza Horizon that sort mm -hmm. of style. But uh, will I finish it? Probably not. <laughs> I, I totally understand. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Like I keep looking for that Need for Speed, the new Need for Speed game that gets back to like Hot Pursuit or something. It pulls like that. you in. Yeah, yeah. Another one. Speaking of that one, the last one that really pulled me in was the one called the uh, Run. Need oh, to run. That yes, was, that was fun. That's I would agree. Actually, the yeah. Run is a surprisingly fun game. I love how it's really long tracks mm -hmm. and and it's got a crazy stupid story. story yeah. It does have the quick time events, but I didn't they're, they're far in between. Yeah. But yeah. it really you're really excited to play that game because you're, yes. you're you're trying to get to this goal in a certain amount when of time. You're, you're driving across the country and mm -hmm. so it's it, it Because the mafia is after you. Yeah, yeah. And there's some really cool moments in that too where I remember like you're in the mountains and like the, the there's an avalanche happening. That the is the time. worst level dude I had so much time getting past that level because you have to make a almost a U turn at a certain part or you'll drive off a cliff. On that that is annoying, but Woo. it's cool that it happens in the game. So yeah, definitely. Anyways, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Next game here. We, um, we need to do a video about like our worst to best Need for Speed games, that, and we'll that, debate them. Definitely, that'd That's, be fun. Uh, that sounds like a great video. All right. Uh, next game here. Uh, oh, got nice. this from uh, Play Asia, East Asia Soft. This is a uh, Ghost Blade for the Switch. Now, um, I had this game for the PS4, but mm -hmm. having it portable on the Switch, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Really good shoot 'em up. This was actually first released on the Dreamcast after the Dreamcast like was, was pretty uh, much done. Okay. So uh, it was what you would call like a, I guess you would call a homebrew title or whatnot. But um, Play Asia, East Asia Soft, they really like made a good package here. So it comes with the, uh, the of course, the game, manual, uh, comes with um, uh, another a tin case, soundtrack, and a certificate card, like a number. I got actually got number 25 here, and hmm. I think they made 3,000 of them, so I got actually got a cool number here. Yeah. But um, I I'm really going to just, shoot them up. I played this a lot on the PS4. That Did version you? is fun, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and it, it, it's not really a long game. It usually goes for around, I think, around five, six levels, um, depending on what you think of the third level, because some people just think that's a bonus level. But it's a lot of fun. Uh, when it comes to shoot them up games, um, Mainly, you want to get that high score. That's what it's usually about. Because yeah. if you're looking for story in this game, it's like non-existent. So <laughs> you just you just jump right in it. Uh, one thing that um, I just, oh my god, I just forgot his name. Our our our, our shoot 'em up king. He does the, all the shoot 'em up videos. Um, oh, the YouTube channel. Studio Mud Friends. I'm so sorry. Yeah, man. we're I, so sorry, dude. I always think about his I was, name so hard. I was hard. looking at the logo. <laughs> I always think about his name so hard. I, yeah. yeah. So he told me about the soundtrack in it. You want to if you play this game, make sure you play the arranged soundtrack. It's a lot better than the, the original soundtrack. Is it okay? To. Yeah, he told me about that. So uh, yeah, Ghost Blade HD um, available from Play Asia. That's where I got my copy from. So check it out. Hmm. All right, next up for me. It's, this is after Christmas, so we have a bunch of new games. Ah, nice. Um, yeah, so No Man's Sky Beyond. So this is this is the PlayStation VR version of No Man's Sky. Right. And the reason why I bought this, I, I originally. In the, I think in our last pickups video, I picked up the the retail version, but you had to download the VR version. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I, get, I picked this up used, and it was actually pretty cheap, so I figured I'd just get on disc. So, have you played No Man's Sky at all? I avoided it after the controversy they yeah. went through, uh, so no. So, so this is the fully patched, or at least it, 
Actually, yeah, because when you pop it in, it'll even download some new stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's a much updated version of the original game that shipped what, okay. two years ago. Mm -hmm. Now there's a space station and there's a bunch of little tweaks to it so that it, it makes it a little bit more interesting is what people say. I didn't re really play the original version when it came out. but So definitive version pretty much and then you enhance your experience with VR gameplay. Yeah. So, okay, it doesn't force you to use VR, but it says enhance it. So cool. Yeah, so the VR, I did play it in VR. Um, for, and honestly, I got really in, I got sucked into it. Really? because Because you are, you know, you're there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's the great thing about VR. And uh, the only thing about this game is, and I know this is going to be old news, but... The, the grinding in it mm -hmm. is pretty heavy. Like, Ugh. you're grinding for materials to, for everything you want to do. So in this game, you really have to love looking for stuff. Yeah, looking for minerals, stuff. building things, uh, uh, you know, that sort of stuff to get off the planet. And then once you get to where you're going, to build your structures out and build bases and stuff like that. Um, I have a friend of mine who has probably put hundreds if not thousands of hours into this, mm -hmm. and he loves that. Oh, really? Um, so if that's your, your gig. I, I do say I think it's worth checking out the VR mode because okay. it's pretty neat to fly around a, a world. Mm -hmm. You know, like technically the, the footage you guys are watching right now, you know, no one has seen this world, right? right. Because I'm the one who discovered it. it. Mm -hmm. And dude, the, the, the galaxy, like I started pulling out to show how big the galaxy is. Mm -hmm. It's immense. It's really? like... Daunting. It's incredible. It just goes on you know, and I, on and I, on and on. I like what you're saying. Maybe I'll take a look at this game. I think I just got a couple more games that I want to beat yeah. before I get into something like you, this. You have to really. It's what I, now. If I remember right, off in the main menu, it does have a version of this where you can just explore, mm -hmm. and it just gives you sort of like infinite resources to build, which which I also messed around with a so, little bit. But I see this as two uh, you can play online, so you yes. can meet people online pretty much. Yeah, so when you and, and I did this a little bit, I don't think I have footage of it, but you do go to like a space station and you'll see avatars of other people there, both generated by the computer and also people who exist in the real world. Now, they, now they can't attack you, nothing, can they? Because I don't know, I, I never got that far. If you, if you went online with Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Redemption, <laughs> oh man, so the thing about this game is, and again, you guys can correct me in the comments, but it's so vast that, honestly, the likelihood of you running into somebody, I think, is fairly low. Really? Just a random person. Okay. However, I was playing it once, and, it, and I was on this planet, and some ships flew over. And I was like, and I wasn't able to take off yet, and I was like, I don't, who is who, who that? Is that? Yeah, 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 is it computer generator, those pirates, or what? So, you know, it's such an interesting game. If you have PlayStation VR, pick it up. Uh, you'll be like me. I, I lost an entire day and a half to it, because okay. I was just wandering i was like this you know <laughs> looking at the sky and looking at stuff and yeah it was it was interesting so uh i don't know if i love it or not but uh i'd be loved to, i'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments so well it's, it's good that sony is still pushing the vr uh, stuff yeah that means the next generation system which the ps5 is what it's called it's gonna yeah. really push that stuff still it's, so. it's gonna be interesting to see what sony does with that because yeah i mean i think people would expect them to do another version mm -hmm. of vr for that to maybe higher resolution also if you guys have messed around with vr it's a mess because just to set it up because you have this like little box you've mm -hmm. got these cables and it's just uh, the me it's a mess to set yeah. up so i'd like to see them stream on that maybe they'll clean it up a bit they Let's need see. to okay don't laugh at me oh uh, really this game is all right oh. <laughs> um i have the ps1 version this is the enhanced version of that one. Is it? Yeah, they should have brought this out over America. So this is actually VIP for the PS2. Uh, as far as I know, this only came out in PAL territories. And if you play the PS1 version, which was, you know, I, I think uh, Angry Video Game Nerd did a video on it. About, uh, yeah, years ago. I um, bought it only because of Pamela Anderson. Actually, can I can I make a yeah, confession? Can I make a confession here? Mm. There will be no footage of this, but while I was moving, I found my old Playboys. Mm -hmm. With the Pamela Andersons in there, really? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Damn, dude, man. Well, this this show, man, yeah. I mean, she, it, it's definitely hey, like back then, man. She, it was it was the thing. Yeah, you know definitely. I mean? Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, and VIP was definitely like one of her. her well, I don't I don't want to say it was over Baywatch, but you know, it was still. It, it was it was such a cheesy over the top show, mm -hmm. and yeah, we we all watched it because it was dumb, and then she was in it, you know. <laughs> well, this game is pretty much an enhanced version of the PS One version, um, and the, that game really consisted of quick time events, and this thing, this game does the same thing, but they added better graphics in this one, That's more so voice acting from the characters, so you're not re reading much text. But 
it's hilarious, man, because she's beating up people with her purse. Her friends doing karate moves. They're throwing grenades and shit. This is, it, it's great fun. Yeah. And this yeah. this show, I remember when I was, in, I think I was in high school. Um, this show used to come on every Saturday. It came on at a weird time though. It came on like at one o'clock, and so most people on were a like, Saturday on a Saturday. Huh. Uh, yeah, on Fox Television. And I was like, everybody's gone usually at that time. So I really rarely ever caught the show. But when I did watch it, it was pretty hilarious. Yeah. So. I saw footage of the game. I said, you know what? I got to add this to the collection. This is pretty cool. So, Dude, what is... That's reminding me. What is this superhero movie that she did? Remember, it's like in the future. She did a... She did a comic book movie. Is she? Yes. Oh, in, in, Babe Wire? Or Wire Babe? What was that? Barb Wire? No. Barb Wire. Okay, that was I think, it. I think that's what it was. That's actually not bad either. It's it? dumb. It's real dumb. This can't be fun. It can't be fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's I still those... haven't watched that one, but I, it was like in black and white, right? No, 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 no. no. no it's it's color, but it's color. Okay. But it's based on oh. a comic or like graphic novel. Okay. Yeah. It, anyways, check that Frank out. Frank Miller, maybe, maybe. From... Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but VIP PS2. Check All it right. Out. Next up, this is uh, Raging Justice oh, for the PS4. Yeah, strictly limited. Yes, and uh, so you you hooked me up with this. Yeah, yeah, they uh, well, they actually they they said they sent it to you, man. So oh, they I did. Okay, delivering. Oh, okay, yeah, because it actually has my name on the back of it, which mm -hmm. is really cool. They sent me two games. I'm gonna show the next one. Um, so Team Seventeen. This is basically a uh, 2D brawler. Yeah, it's from creators of the. Uh, I think they, what I was told that uh, creators of Rare, former team members, okay, uh, are branched off and did their own game, and they helped create this game. Now I could be wrong about that. You know, let me know in the comments. I think I'm right, but. Uh, they allegedly they're supposed to make this game, and it's a it's a cool beat 'em up. Well, the the thing I immediately noticed was the graphic style. Mm -hmm. Like it just has this very unique graphic style where uh, it almost looks like it's uh, what what would you say? It's not um, it's, it's not hand animated. It just I mean, you guys are. Seeing it reminds you of something like Primal Rage yes. back in the day, like yes. arcades. It kind of reminds you of that or Rampage uh, World, Tour, like the Rampage uh, okay. games. Oh, yep. The newer ones, of course, is that it has those kind of graphics. I don't know what you would call it. Yeah, not like claymation or nothing like no, that. No, no, but, but it's like um, like motion captured or well, yeah, I, yeah, uh, like well, maybe like that game. What's that game called? Clay Fighters in a way, but not yeah. like Clay Fighter with that kind of style. Pre rendered or something like Weird. that. Weird. We don't. I don't yeah, know. but you guys see the footage here. But it's it's striking though when I first played it because I was like, wow, this is actually a really cool looking mm -hmm. game, um, and it's beating the tar out of everybody. <laughs> Bad. I mean, you yeah. can handcuff them, get extra points and everything like that. But most yeah. of the time, you'll be beating them down. Because you can run over people with freaking like like a freaking uh, steamrollers and stuff. If you get into certain vehicles, you're running people over in the street. Um, yeah, it's it, it's a three it's a three player co op game as well. Um, oh, so it you, supports you, three. That's cool. It supports three pl oh, players. Oh yeah, you're right. It's just not online, so mm -hmm. you'll be doing more more couch co op. But I remember following this game from the beginning. It only had a one player mode in the beginning, hmm. so they added all the the second player and third player modes in later, which is great. But yeah, a, a really cool game. Like I said, a very unique art style. If you're in the beat 'em ups, mm -hmm. you should definitely check this out. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, it's cool. All right, next game here is Burger Time Party uh, for the Switch. Hmm. Uh, I picked this up. I figured, you know, I hadn't played a Burger Time game in a long time, and I wanted to see what was different about it. And pretty much, it's pretty much the same as the original Burger Time. You can play up to four players on this game. Uh, couch co-op. Um, I don't think you can play it online or anything like that, but it's probably a lot of fun the more people you have on it. I yeah, think. I can see this bit like it's being a party game, as, hence yeah. the name. And, yeah, hence, yeah, hence the name and everything. But I thought it was something cool to pick up. I went to Best Buy to pick this up, and I asked them, and they only got like one copy in. Like the day it came out, which is weird as well, hell. I remember when this came out, and yeah, I was like, "What? A new, a new Burger Time game?" Yeah, like, exactly. What? <laughs> so, yeah, huh. XC is the one that brought this out as a physical. I'm seeing here, and uh, they they were the ones that brought the Ease games to the, the PS. Yeah, they're, stuff, a, they're so. a serious publisher. That's interesting. Huh. So well, we, you and I might have to play that. Yeah, definitely. So Burger Time Party. If you guys have played it, um, let us know if they yeah. if you think they changed anything or is more of the same. Hmm. All right, next up for me, you another game that you handed off to me. Yeah. Yes, so this is a strictly limited again. This is R-Type Dimensions EX on the PlayStation 4. Uh, I captured all the footage for this, and uh, Reggie was like, dude, you got to check out the, the option where you can instantly switch back between new and old graphics. I love that, man. I was doing it all the time because yeah. it's so flawless. Like, it does this, like, kind of, like, uh, transition between yeah, the like, two. Exactly. It's flawless. Dude, and... Yeah, it was like amazing to watch. I was like, "Holy crap, this is so cool!" Yeah, the first game I saw do that, I think, was a Wonder Boy game or something like that. Oh, I did it. yes, you're right. And, and uh, also, there was a uh, 
what was it a Maniac Mansion or something like that or a did Monkey that, Island game also that did, did that, that too. Did yeah. Well. yeah, but yeah. not as, as flawlessly as this. Yeah, that just feels like yeah. It's like, yeah, I did, wow. I know. I kept doing it, thinking, oh, is because you know you'd go at. There'd be different stuff on the screen. And be like, is it gonna do it every time? I was. It was funny. The funny situation with me when I did. It, I, th- I did it on accident, and I kept doing it on accident. I didn't know. Well, I thought there was something wrong with the game. <laughs> like it was just like some kind oh, of glitch at funny. first. I was like, wait a minute. You're switch. You can switch graphics in this game. Yeah. That, I love that kind of. That's. I think that's really cool. The developer did that. So um, if you if you're able to pick this game up, definitely pick it up. Um, I mean, just this is a throwback type shoot 'em up. You know, uh, I I didn't. I was never really a big fan of R type games because. The first art type I played was art type Delta, and that game beat me down. Oh. But as I went back and played the older ones, I started to kind of gradually like the series. So Yeah. And this has two games in it. It's art type 1 and 2. Yep. So, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Very cool. So. Awesome. I know. All right. Next game here. Um, okay, I'm just going to come out and admit this. I was never a big fan of Mario 64. Um, I like the whole free roam aspect of it, but mm. I just... I, I was always tired of Mario and the Princess and all that stuff. Rescue the Princess. Like, ugh, get out of here. You know, it's funny because I played that game first on the DS and you had mm-hmm. to use a little thumb thing. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it was like, <laughs> although I played it a lot, but it was pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty rough on that system. But uh, this game right here, A Hat in Time, is pretty much like a love letter to games like Mario 64. Hmm. And I feel like this is this game is like just one of the top 3D platformers I've ever played. Really? Um, and it's really fun. The presentation in this game is like, this like on like a, on like Disney level or something like that. I was really impressed with it. Hmm. Um, so basically you play as the hat girl and she has her own little spaceship and everything. And then uh, there's they have like these little planets and everything that you go to. So the first planet you're near is Mafia Town and to be in their orbit, you got to pay them, you got to pay the toll she doesn't have the money, so... Is it based on a uh, I don't, show or something? It looked like it's based on the show, but yeah. I've never seen it, so... Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's just... Man, this game is... There's so many good things to say about this game. Um, I, I say the only bad thing I could say is I wish it was uh, uh, the physical for PS4 or, or possibly Xbox, because the Switch is the weaker system. Mm-hmm. So you can tell... If you compare the two uh, the versions, or all, any of the versions with the Switch, you, the Switch obviously is the weaker one. Mm. But other than that, I'm happy it got a physical release. Um, if you like, I said, if you like games like Mario sixty four, this is definitely something you could get into. I'm still in the beginning stages of the game, but the the humor in this game is hilarious. The the actions and all the stuff you could do, it's great. So uh, I don't hear a lot of people talking about yeah. it, but I want to put the word out. A Hat in Time does have a physical release. I've never heard of that before. Crazy. <laughs> okay. All right. Next up for me, a super rare release here. This is the Gardens Between. Have you heard Whoa, of this? No. Yeah, so this is the special edition of The Gardens Between. And The Gardens Between is a really interesting puzzle game that deals with dimensions. Now, the reason why it's called The Gardens Between because it's basically about two friends Mm -hmm. that live next to each other, and there's a garden in between them that has a a Mm treehouse. And one night during this uh, stormy weather, this, like, ball appears, and it sucks them into the kind of these dimensions. And basically the the way this game plays is a puzzle game where... The, the stick of your controller moves time forward or back. So mm-hmm. you'll see on the screen here, your characters are kind of walking around because I'm pushing them forward in time. Mm-hmm. And then they can interact with something that can exist outside of time. And then you can back them up in time to do a part of the puzzle that will then unlock something forward Ooh. in time. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's hard for me to describe because you're not seeing the footage, but yeah. they are. So there's these little spheres or whatever that you're uh, messing around with, as well as these kind of plants that can affect it. it. I know it's really hard to, I wish I had some some footage to show you personally, but um, the thing that's really interesting about this game is I mentioned the two friends and each level is sort of a moment or memory that they share together. Mm-hmm. So whether it's hanging out watching movies or maybe uh, doing some sort of sports or playing video games, the level itself will be designed around that it memory. Look, yeah, it looks it looks pretty cool actually from what I'm seeing on the back of the cover here. Yeah, it's it's a, actually got really great reviews, and really? so yeah, I did. It's a, and you'll see the, the the graphics are fantastic. It's it's like 3D, but it's kind of 2.5D because they're kind of moving around. But then, anyways, it's just a, a very unique, interesting puzzle game. I liked it way more than I expected to, and I, I know a lot of people do because that's that's why they ended up doing a physical for it. Rare. They're putting out the Switch titles, yeah, and, and this this big collector's edition of it too. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, I really dig this game a lot. It's cool, and okay. it, it's got a little bit of the feels going on too. It's yeah, I, I actually been paying attention to super rare games, you know, especially now that I'm on the Switch hype train, as you guys yeah. can probably tell. Um, but 
Man, I have like I think I have like almost eighty Switch games now, man. Like it's pretty crazy. Well, it, it, we were just hanging out at a, at a retro store here, and it's, I keep seeing Switch games I've never seen before. Yeah, and it's probably like what you're saying about Burger Time. It's like maybe there's one or two copies at the store. You don't know. Like mm-hmm. there's just sometimes like there was a puzzle game. I forget what it was called, but I was like, what is this? Wait, what is this? I've like, never man. seen this before. So, <laughs> anyways, yeah. So check out uh, the Garden Between. All right. Speaking of Switch. Well, I'll probably save this game for the last, but um, I wanted to go ahead and put this out here. So, you guys know I like beat 'em up games, mm-hmm. and um, this game was a total surprise to me. Uh, this is River City Girls for PS4 and Switch. I've heard of this. So, it's basically like a sequel to a River City Ransom in a yeah. way, or maybe like a side story. But um, this is made by Way Forward. Oh, and, okay. Um, and Arc System Works. And uh, this game, from what I read, it was allegedly in 13 years in the making in a way. Huh. So, like, yeah, so. It's a beat em up game where these girls, they lose their boyfriends and they're going on a quest to save them or whatnot. And um, the graphics in the game really just remind me of just like, the, well, their pixel art and everything. So uh, I already love it and everything. Yeah. But it's like a free roam beat em up game where you go to different areas. Like you don't just uh, just run through a level or whatnot. You go to, you open up different areas by doing certain tasks or beating certain bosses. Mm-hmm. When you get to that point, you level up. I mean, you get money to buy new moves. You buy food to help you out. Like if you run out of energy because... Once you run out of life, it's game over pretty much. So you want to make sure your character is healthy or whatnot. So they've added kind of RPG elements to it. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's just the, the original one did too in a way. Um, I don't, I don't. I don't yeah, think. I remember that being. Yeah. it's kind of big selling point. But this one's again way forward. I love what they do. Oh yeah, way, yeah, way forward. They're, they're on, yeah, they're, huh. they're tearing it up. So River City Girls a good beat them up. Uh, it was this is this is the limited run version of mm-hmm. it. Um, they were selling the Switch version. At a Best Buy, uh, if, if you have a, if your local Best Buy, you can pick it up there. If they sell out, uh, I think uh, Play Asia is actually selling their own version of it as well. So yeah. there'll always be a physical version out for it. That reminds me that yeah, I went into a Best Buy over Christmas and I was surprised to see how many limited run games were just yeah, uh, in stock. It's, it's nice. I, yeah, that's why I was going to get them and everything because I love just walking into the store. Yep. So, there it is right yeah. there. And also, just last thing, it comes with a nice manual. Uh, that has like a lot of. I stories. saw that. It's like a yeah, book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it has like a comic at the end, character art. It, they did a really good job on the manuals. So, huh. yeah, great game, guys. Okay, cool. All right, uh, next up for me, we're getting towards the end here. Yeah. This is uh, this is one of those things that I ordered so long ago I forgot oh. when it came in the mail. So this is the uh, Planescape Torment, Icewind Dale. These are the enhanced edition. This is like the I forget what they call this version of. It. It's like the legendary edition of these two games. So these two, um, these are classic role-playing games that were remastered for modern consoles, be it the Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and also, of course, PC. So they had these really, really cool versions of these games, if you could get. So um, this is one of the characters in Planescape Torment (laughs) in squishy form. Right. Mort, uh, the, the talking skull. It comes with the book. I haven't opened this one yet, so I don't. That might just literally be a journal. I, have I no think it's idea. like a journal. It looks like a journal, definitely. Um, comes with some pins. So there's technically two kind of massive RPGs here. So uh, obviously, Planescape Torment. That's Mort, and then uh, Icewind Dale. This is pretty cool. This is like a like a medallion or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's heavy, heavy, heavy metal. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> also, it has some some dice here, specific for the games because these are very uh, heavy on uh, you know advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. So the the you know the lineage of this is role playing like the hardcore mm-hmm. pen and paper. Um, yeah. So you can see it's just and the game is in here as well. But I figured I'd show. Okay. I think this is the uh, poster in here. So. Yeah, it's so quite the collector's edition. Quite the collector's edition. Of, Skybound Games did the okay did, did this. Um, I'm guessing they did the packaging for it. Yeah, and it, this is again yeah because Beam Dog is the people who actually made the enhanced versions of okay. this. But these are just kind of you know this was kind of a big deal when they were announcing that they're going to put physical versions of these games mm-hmm. because they they took them and they made them enhanced. So it's not just a port of an old DOS game. It's right. actually they made sure they fixed it up. Yeah, and supported controllers Does it have and stuff like that. The switch feature, maybe you can switch to the older version. Uh, no. That would be cool. They added <laughs> that, that, that would be cool. Although sometimes that's depressing though cuz you see just how, yeah, how, bad how crappy it was. <laughs> well, people still got some enjoyment out of it. I know. So. Yeah. So anyways, I thought I'd show this cuz uh, like I said I ordered this one so long ago. I when it came I was like what? What is this huge body? Right. I have no idea. So, yeah, very cool. 
All right. Um, so next game here is, uh, I, I want to say this is like a Zelda-type game. Um, this is Sparklight um, for the PS4 and Switch. Um, yeah, yeah. This is like an indie game by Merge Games. Uh, mm-hmm. They they usually have their, a lot of their titles uh, with um, uh, signature edition games from okay. that company. Um, so basically, if you're a fan of like Zelda-like games, you'll definitely could get into this one. Um, I'm still in the beginning stages of the game, but to me, uh, the Zelda games for me, though I do like them, you know, Zelda 2 probably my favorite, even though that's, that's considered a black sheep of the series. Um, I, I never really got into the other ones that much besides Minish Cap because they don't really have that much story that really in- interests me the way they kind of tell it. But this game has a lot of characters interacting with each other and everything mm-hmm. like that, so it's really... Uh, it really pulls you in. It's a lot. Of, it's a really fun game. Okay, and it, it oh, it looks very much like Minish Cap too. Yeah, yeah. So um, huh. can't really tell you too much about the story yet because I'm still in the beginning. Basically, you start on a ship. You know, your ship crashes. Um, you uh, I'm digging the art style. It's good. Oh yeah, definitely. And you end up in a, you end up in this village after beating the first. Well, getting beat by the first boss actually, because uh, you fight the first boss and then you get beat up. By oh her, okay. Yeah, you wake up and you yeah so. Uh, but anyways, I'm really liking the game so far, and um, it's one of those games that's is slipping under the radar. As of right now, as of this video, the game's being sold at um, GameStop for $10. Hmm. It was a $30 game. The PS4 version is $10. Switch version is $14. Now, that's the cheapest physical copy of a Switch game brand new I've ever seen. Yeah, that's true. So, And the reason why they had to drop it in price is because no one's buying it because they don't know about this game. They have no idea what hmm. it is. So just want to get the word out to you guys. Yeah. A Sparklight. Definitely give it a go. bucks? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Seriously, that's like a meal or something. So yeah. definitely take a chance. All right, next up for me is a uh, gift from a friend of of the channel, longtime friend of the channel, who uh, wishes to rename. Uh, wait, remain anonymous. anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> I can speak. Um, he knows that I love Hero, and so he. I don't know if he actually made this or got it somewhere, but that's mm-hmm. the. Uh, um, that's the patch that you would get if you were really good at the game. So I don't know where this shirt comes from. I actually asked him and he didn't respond because uh, we were talking about other stuff. So mm-hmm. I think he forgot. But yeah, so I'm a huge fan of Hero, as you guys know. Is that actually Hero on the on the cover there? Is that what he looks yeah, like? Yeah, okay. that's uh, our Hero. <laughs> okay, okay. I think his name is Roderick Hero or whatever. And then, <laughs> but this is what the patch looked like if you got a high enough score and you mailed it into Activision. Right. And so um, I was like, wow, that's kind of amazing. And then also, too, he found this at like a pawn shop, which is what? Hero on Commodore 64, but again, the cassette version. Mm-hmm. That's I've never seen that How would before. That play? Like, yeah, it's funny that, and it, by the way, it comes with the manual in the cassette version. So. Cause yeah, I, I, see, I haven't touched the table in a long time. You know, you know what's funny crazy. about this actually is I, I did a Discord chat recently and a guy in there was like, "How you just like you?" It was like, "Games came on cassette," and I was mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, it was it was a thing in the '80s." You know, um, th- the truth is that when I first got a Commodore 64, my first like way of loading games was on cassette because it was mm-hmm. cheaper because you could buy the cassette drive and blank cassettes, you know, for for nothing. Um, and then I then I got a floppy disk drive a few like maybe a year or two later. But in Europe, it's my understanding that they stuck with cassettes for Years. almost the an entire decade. Really? Yeah. Okay. That especially for certain systems because it's so cheap. Right. Right. Now it's basically uh, if you guys ever heard a modem, you know, it's like that's what this sounds like. If you were to put this in your car, that's what that's what it would sound oh, like. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the downside to this is that cassettes load slow. Because it's not mm-hmm. like it loads fast. It literally just, you know, goes Turning. in cassette speed. So mm-hmm. uh, when I was a kid, it would sometimes take 20 minutes to load one game on cassette. It took forever. So that's why most people aren't really nostalgic for, cass- you know, cassettes. But still, it's cool that the game is on this cassette. Yeah, you know, definitely. And, right. and I could pop it in there and load it on my, my Commodore 64 if I wanted to. So... <laughs> Uh, very cool find Definitely for sure. Very cool. Yeah. Wow. I need to do a video on that. I think at some point because I do have enough of these now. Right. Where it'd be cool to show people and. Yeah, definitely, you know, man. Yeah, it'd be pretty, pretty fun. So. Just make sure you have the, the tape version preloaded before you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. that's true. Don't do it in real time because it. Yeah, it'd be a long video. All right, so um, I'm gonna say this one for last. Is that all? Is, is that it? I have one more. Okay, so I have two more. So this one. Um, we talked about this on the Switch. I mean, um, on the PS4. Oh, this is a Cal- yes. uh, Calderas Blaze. I think uh, it's Caladrius. Is it Caladrius Blaze? Blaze? I, always, I don't know. I always mix I, it up between the I, two, I, I and I hate that. It. It's just like, I don't know. But Caladrius Blaze for the Switch. Uh, they got this from uh, Play Asia. 
And uh, it this God, game, still yeah, it, cool. it, it comes with this. It comes together like that, and I was really hmm. impressed with the games in English and everything. Not that you need to shoot up to be be in English or whatnot. But uh, this is like one of my top favorite shooters because I love how it is. Like you don't have to collect weapons in this game. You start with your own weapons. You just level them up. Mm -hmm. and you go through the levels and everything. You and I did a video, a let's play on this at one yeah, we point. We did. We okay. did a let's play on this it's one. It's all coming back. The game was a blast. And now it's been ported to the Switch, which I think is awesome. Mm -hmm. And I, this is the perfect game for the Switch, I think. Because I, I, I look at the Switch as more of a portable system. Yeah. I, mean, a lot, I, know, I know people can say it's a, a console, but it's, it's portable. So I wanted to have this game as a portable because I like having shooting modes to play on the go. And the Switch has a big screen and everything like that, so I, I love that. And um, yeah, Clutter Displays, or whatever we want to call it, <laughs> uh, is a really good, it's a top notch shoot em up. It is. And, and um, you definitely check out the Let's Play video we did, and you guys can see what I'm talking about. I'm happy to have this on the Switch uh, from Play Asia. So. There are so many games on Switch. It, again, I know we've mentioned this previously in this video, but man, it's just like, it's insane, isn't it? It is. Did, did, you, mean, did you hear that recently the Switch did what? It sold more consoles than the Super Nintendo officially now. Like it's beyond the Super Nintendo in sales, which yeah. is, is kind of crazy because we still got a couple more years of it. Yeah, we do. That's a, that's insane. But at the same time, back then, video games weren't mainly they weren't really mainstream. Back yeah, then, I would say that's true. They didn't, they didn't start going mainstream until I would say the PlayStation at least. That's when it, people that didn't play video games start getting into it. Yeah, they start talking about it on Hollywood and all that you stuff. You know, like, you're right because I mean, you're right because back then it was mostly for kids, but exactly. now it's kids, Marketing. adults, it's everybody, grandparents, everybody. Yeah. yeah, so huh? That's good to pass it up, man. I, I mean, the Switch is definitely my favorite system over the Super Nintendo, which was, was my number one favorite Nintendo console. So yeah, I, Switch I, is beat it out. I love collecting for it, and just because it is so flexible, like mm -hmm. you know, if I'm going to travel anywhere, any to go, it's yeah, it's just you just pop it out, and also I just love how you just pop it in and it just shows up on your TV. And how, how do you feel about the Switch Lite? Yeah, the Switch it doesn't switch. I we, I bought a, a Switch Lite. I know <laughs> I, I bought a Switch Lite for my wife and. Uh, it, well, it wouldn't be that bad, except for it's such a pain in the butt to to deal with your one uh, account on multiple devices. Oh, the account thing, yeah, that, oh, that was a nightmare. Yeah. Hey, in this day and age, with iPhones and Android devices, they figured it out. It should just be tied to your account. You should be able to download all the games you purchase on any device. You know, authenticate it however you want, but it's but it's a pain in the butt to go back and forth. Yeah, so. Nintendo, they want to make sure, yeah, they're, they're on it. They don't want, I, I don't know. know what's going on with them. But so they, other than that, I think it's fine. Although, personally, I like the fact that this, the Switch does Switch. Yes. <laughs> and therefore, it should be, it, it. you know what it should have came with? It should have came with like a HDMI out. That problem solved. True. You know, that's what they should have done. If they don't want to do the dock, then <clears throat> that's fine. So, all right. My last thing is... Pretty cool. Okay. Um, uh, friend of the YouTube channel who wants to remain anonymous uh, sent yeah. this to me as a Christmas present. One of the okay. last handhelds that I need for my collection. And I was oh, wow, flabbergasted dude. when he sent this to me. So mm -hmm. this is the Turbo Express. This is the portable version of the Turbo Graphics 16 mm -hmm. or PC Engine. And what's amazing about this is <clears throat> that it all. Screen mod and yes. all of the caps have been uh, replaced. Outstanding. These things it's, were even they were even hard to find back when they first came out. You you hardly saw them in stores. I was like, man, like only the time I saw it was on TV, and none of my friends ever had any, one of these. So yeah. So you can see, I mean, it just looks afterburner nice, and it just looks flawless. And so. Mm -hmm. um, this does, is a pretty amazing Christmas. Does, is he, did he mod it to where it plays on the? You could mod it. You could play it on your television if you have a cord on it. Or uh, I don't know. That's a great question. So, but that's that's still cool as hell, man. It Jesus is Christ. still really cool. Um, and I'm actually using the uh, the Stone I, Age Gamer, the uh, the EverDrive in there. I think it might. I think this might be it right here. Hmm. I could be wrong though, but. Yeah, I like. Well, it's actually my first time holding one. I, you know, I, I mean, me too, you never find these, and so never. I'll see them at conventions occasionally. But mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely one of the last handhelds that I wanted for my collection. So, again, he wants to remain anonymous, but you know who you are, and I'm eternally grateful. It's such a cool thing. So, yeah. the, 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 it looks amazing. Doesn't it does. It? Did you imagine they had these this kind of screen back when this first came out? Like, I know. Maybe like it looks flawless, doesn't it? Yeah, dude. It looks yeah, it's so cool. Jeez, can I borrow this? Of course. Like forever? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. My last game 
uh, as a game I've been waiting for for ever since it got announced. And I'm a big fan of a company called Indie Crates. Um, pretty much have all their items they put out. They're they're actually like the guys that developed the Mega Man X games before hmm. um, they were really known about because Capcom l- l- took the public like they would like say, say for instance like Mega Man X the Mega Man X series uh, Mega Man X one through five. They actually developed those games under Capcom, though, so Capcom got the credit, but their name wasn't really put out there. So they eventually moved on to their own company, and they started making similar games to those. And the one I want to show you guys is Gunvolt uh, Chronicles Luminous Avenger 9. This is the third game in the Gunvolt series. Oh, I didn't even know it was a series. Yeah, it's a series now. And um, uh, this game, this is the PS4 version and uh, a Switch version, of course. Uh, I got these from Play Asia. Um, Limited Run did a, a run of these as well, and I think right now they're at Best Buy. The reason I got to play Asia copies was because they came with a soundtrack, and um, you know, like I feared the Limited Run version that I saw huh. only came with just the game, so I just went with this version. But the game is a really awesome uh, oh. 2D platformer. Um, Look at this! I know the, the, the Switch version came with two like little mini soundtracks. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to cool. open that because it's sealed. Oh. But I saw it on the back. It's like, oh, these are mini CDs. Yeah, yeah, and, it, and I, I just thought that was great and everything. So um, hmm. you're seeing the footage right here for yourself. Luminous Avenger is like really like a game at some point. These are the type of games I played coming up as a kid, and I still have a lot of love for them. And uh, me and my friend Gary, we just like. Played the Mega Man X series to a T, and it's funny how we're older and we're still playing games that are very similar similar to those games. And well, you know why? Because that's a it's a timeless gameplay mechanic. I mean, mm-hmm. if anything is, with all these indie games, has taught us is that, yeah, you can go back and recreate or enhance these styles of games because they they hold up. Yeah, you they know? do. They it's, really do. Huh. And um, like I said, I'm happy you got a physical release. They're actually talking about releasing the uh, the, the first two games on the PS4 as a physical. So okay. hopefully that happens. Um, I definitely will get that game. But I think I played it on the 3DS originally. And then yeah, that's where it originally came yeah. out on 3DS. And okay. Everything. And um, definitely better to play it on a, a big TV if you can. So, um, um, yeah. I am picking these up. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, everybody, that is it for the Pickles video. That's, that's I know. It. We had some good stuff in here. Yeah, definitely, man. Where can people find you? Uh, Radical um, Reggie, YouTube. Uh, just come check me out and um, all that good stuff. So... Um, I'm kinda, I always get sad in these videos. I know, I know, I know man. Well, you know what, though? See, they don't know this, but you're actually spending the night here, and we're going to do a mm-hmm. bunch of videos. So yep. it's only begun. All right, guys. All so. right, thanks for watching. Hey, guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Radical Reggie in the new game room. Yes. What, what do you think, dude? Fucked up, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead again. Nah, All right. Was... Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Radical Reggie in what's, the new game room. What's going on? I messed up again. <laughs> Sorry, I knew you thought I was going to... Yeah. I, I should just be like, with Radical Reggie, I'll, I'll stop. And okay. Go. okay. Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Radical Reggie. What's going on, everyone? And I see we are in a new game room. Um, I know. What do you think? I'm just glad you didn't help me to ask you move. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you should I, totally, you should totally. <laughs> I, love what you, I love where you're going with that. <laughs>